I promised this a number of months ago and it is finally time. Welcome to the home server room rebuild part two. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Today starts part two of my home server room rebuild, if you were paying attention to the intro. Uh, today, we are going to be building a Proxmox virtualization server. For as many fully fleshed out and pretty intuitive features that are inside of FreeNAS, virtualization is not one that I would put very high on that list. While you can do virtualization on FreeNAS, and in fact, I've done a number of service tutorials and you can click right up there if you wanna see them, it is not what I would rely on for a more complicated workload. That left me needing a brand new virtualization server and some new hardware to run it on. So I decided to use not this motherboard. So why is this board on the table? Well, this is my Hunan Dual X79 motherboard. And if you wanna see a review on that, you can go ahead and click right up there. While this kind of works for a workstation board, running it for a full-time server, I'm just not a huge fan of. Now I have been running a Biang knockoff X79 motherboard for the last year and a half in my old FreeNAS box. And that has been working perfectly but I'm getting to the point I'm kind of done dealing with the quirks of those boards, especially when like price hardware has come available on the market. The other reason this is out is I just need to rip the Gamax GT coolers off of this because those will be going on my new board, which looks a little something like this. Stand up, stand up, stand up, yes. This is a Gigabyte GA7PESH2, and it is a dual 2011 socket motherboard on a C602 Intel chipset. The difference being, well, this is backed by an actual manufacturer with actual BIOS features and actual other things that I come to expect out of a server or workstation board. You'll notice right off the bat, this has 16 DIMM slots instead of just four. That allows me to spread out all of my quad channel memory on both sockets very, very easily and efficiently. There are in total 14 SATA ports on this board, two of them built straight into the motherboard here and another three on a mini SAS plug, which can break out to four SATA ports each. There is video out on this board, which is kind of a nice feature to have if I ever need to diagnose it or even for setting up my base OS. There are two gigabit NICs on this board, plus a dedicated management port. I'm not sure if that's a lights out management port. I'll have to dig into that once I get the system together. But the long and short of it is I'm gonna feel a lot better about using a gigabyte server board than using a knockoff Hunan X79 motherboard. And the best part about all this is this board was 199 on Amazon. And in fact, I think the same deal was on Newegg as well. Links for everything that I can provide will be down in the video description, although some of this hardware is used and I just had to find it on eBay. So what other parts am I using? Well, to start things off, I am pilfering other parts from my old FreeNAS box that I built about a year and a half ago off that Biang X79 motherboard. Uh, for starters, I've got this E5 2650 CPU. Now what's better than an eight core, 16 threaded, two gigahertz CPU that only draws 65 watts? Well, how about two of them? Power consumption is going to be a major component of this build, as in I don't want a lot of it, and I want the system to run fairly cool for as much power as it's going to have. So I am going to have 16 cores, 32 threads, and 64 gigabytes of memory, but I'm hoping to draw less than 250 watts of power at full tilt. We'll see if I can actually achieve that. And that's also the reason I'm not taking my dual E5 2690 CPUs off of this Hunan board is, honestly, I don't need that much power. The extra 900 megahertz is just going to be wasted for the majority of my projects. We're also gonna have a total of 64 gigabytes on eight eight gigabyte sticks of 1333 ECC registered memory. Uh, four of these sticks I did pull out of that old box. And again, I bought another four to match. Of course, I can't do anything on my server rack without doing a little bit of 10 gig networking. And I bought this QLogic dual SFP plus 10 gigabit network card. This was about $40 and uh, an amazingly good deal. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to add a heatsink onto this chip. I'm not sure how warm it's gonna get. So that is something we will have to keep an eye on. But $40, one heck of a deal. Now again, keeping this thing cool and quiet is going to be one of the major goals of today's build. Again, I'm using the dual Gamax GT coolers on the CPUs, and I'm also using a set of deep cool fans for the intakes on the front of my server. And yeah, it's gonna have a little bit of RGB. On the backside, I'm actually using a pair of Noctua 80 millimeter fans to uh, get all that hot air out of the case, as the back of the case only has two 80 millimeter fan slots. So this is what we can do. Storage is the one thing that I'm a little bit torn on how I want to work it still. Uh, for starters, I'm just gonna use these two 100 gig Kingston SSDs, which are only about $20 a piece on Amazon right now. Heck of a good deal if you're looking just to get into some solid state storage on your rig. But we're gonna be running these in a RAID 1. I'm undecided on the rest of my storage for the server. I'm not sure if I wanna go full SSD or if I'm gonna end up with some spinning drives in it. That'll be determined in a later video. Other than that, I've just got some random cables over here, a PCIe to EPS cable adapter, so I can use two rails off of my 450 watt power supply to power this thing. 
Don't yell at me for only using 450 watts. It is a bronze rated power supply. And again, the whole goal of the server is to draw less than 250 watts at full tilt. At idle, this should draw less than 100 watts if I'm kind of lucky. We'll, we'll find out when uh, I'm all done with this. Uh, I've also got some mini SAS to SATA breakout cables and some SATA power splitters for running all the drives that I choose to do in the future. Uh, let's get this thing together. Oh, what case am I building in? That might be nice to know. I'm building in another Rosewill 4U chassis. This one's a little bit different. It's a little bit shorter than my last case, uh, but it should do a fantastic job. Now, let's get this thing together. So I got the system, well, the basis of it together, and I'm over here trying to get it to post, and unfortunately, it's not. Now, server boards can be quite a finicky thing. Uh, there's about a hundred different jumpers on here. One of them could be set to something it's not supposed to be set to, uh, but the long and short of it is, it's not posting. So basically what happens is the motherboard turns on, fans start to spin up, and then it just clicks itself off. And then a couple seconds later, it clicks itself back on, fans start to spin up, and then it kills itself again. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is, but it is getting a little bit late at night, so I think I'm gonna call this one for the day. Uh, if I do manage to get this one posted tomorrow, you'll know because I'll start digging into the rest of it. Uh, if not, I'll probably go through some of my troubleshooting steps, let you know exactly where this project sits, but I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Day number two, and we are officially, unfortunately, in full diagnostic mode. Uh, so I spent about an hour on this server last night after I got off the camera, going through all the different jumpers on the motherboard and flipping through the manual to make sure all of them were set correctly, because this is a used board. It could have had some weird setting that is causing it to no longer boot. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And boy, has it been my week for hardware failures. Uh, having trouble with this server getting booted, uh, my little LED screen back here, the pixel art screen, that's no longer working. Uh, also, my 10 gig switch that's in my network closet died on me yesterday, just flat out died. Uh, so yeah, good run of bad luck as they say. But none of that's gonna stop me, just gotta press forward and get this server booting uh, so we can move on with the rest of this video. Uh, I'm gonna start off by testing the hardware that I don't know is good. So this does have two different CPUs. One of them was in my previous server, the other I bought off eBay. Same deal with the RAM. I've got eight sticks of RAM in here, four of them were in my previous server, four of them I bought off eBay. I've got the motherboard to, to diagnose. I've got to make sure it's not actually just the power supply. A Lot of variables to test here. We're gonna go through them kind of one by one and see where we land. So at this point, I am fairly certain I have a dead motherboard, which means I am probably going to be at a stopping point for today. Obviously, I can't go any further. Uh, I tested the CPU individually. I tested the RAM individually. Uh, I'm getting the same result on this motherboard, even with only one CPU plugged in and none of the RAM filled in. Uh, I'm not getting any beep codes. I'm not getting any post lights or anything else. It's just the, you hear the relay click on, the system runs for about two or three seconds and then it clicks itself back off and it just boot loops. So unfortunately, this is where we're gonna have to leave you. Psych, maybe, just maybe the problem was that six pin to eight pin EPS adapter that I got, uh, it's working. 
Now that the system is actually posting, it's time to get everything put back together and then we'll deal with the power supply. Uh, I do have a couple other power supplies around here. I'm not sure if the problem is with the power supply on the PCIe adapter, if I'm just not getting the amperage I need to support that CPU socket, or if I need a dedicated eight pin out, in which case we're gonna be on hold again because I don't have an additional power supply with more than one EPS connector. Uh, the only two that I do are in Threadripper and my X99 workstation. So, uh, soldier on. And she's alive! We've got all 16 cores, all 32 threads, and all 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, the problem was really stupid simple, so let me walk you through how I troubleshooted this thing. Troubleshot, troubleshooted, troubleshot. So I started my troubleshooting by removing pretty much all the RAM except one stick and uh, tried to turn the system on, same result. So I pulled this side, which is CPU one, this is CPU zero. I pulled the RAM and the CPU from this side and tried to post with just one single stick and the CPU. That still didn't post. So I pulled the RAM entirely, so no RAM in the system, to see if I can get any kind of beep codes. Same result, same exact message. So at this point, I'm leaning motherboard. I'm, I'm thinking I've got a bad motherboard of some kind. And I went, well, as long as I'm down this far, let's swap out the CPU. So I swapped out the CPU, same result. And I went, well, I haven't tested the power supply yet. That's when I got up here to the power supply. And you can see right here is my PCIe to eight pin EPS adapter. And then on this side is the CPU adapter uh, from the power supply itself. Now, when I had first set the system up, I had those reversed. The adapted cable was going to CPU zero. So all of my testing was done on this side. The problem with that is, is when one of the pins doesn't plug into this adapter, your motherboard doesn't get power, or your CPU doesn't get power. So because this cable wasn't connected properly, the system wasn't booting. I swapped out that adapted cable for the built-in EPS cable, hit the power button, and all of a sudden I got a couple of beep tones, which meant I've got more life than I ever had before. Uh, went ahead and put the rest of the RAM in there, got it to post, put everything back installed, and everything is up and running now. I am super excited. I'm not gonna get to any numbers today. I'm not gonna install an OS. Uh, we're pretty late in the evening as it is, but uh, hey, I've got a live server and I'm ready for the next step, which is installing Proxmox. So that is gonna do it for me on this episode. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Uh, definitely a little bit more excitement than I wanted in this build, and I'm still down a significant amount of hardware. Like I said, that 10 gig switch in my closet really irritates me. Uh, that wasn't the Microtix switch, that's an old Unify edge switch that died on me. And uh, boy, that's gonna be expensive to replace. Anyway, uh, this is where we're gonna leave you. Make sure to like this video if you liked it or dislike it if you didn't like it and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing and if you're interested in picking up any of the parts that I featured on the show today, I will have the majority of them in Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. I should have part two, episode two up later this week with the Proxmox install and I may go through a tutorial on that. I might just do a basic system setup. I haven't quite decided and it kind of depends on how much time I have this week to get that up and running. But do stay tuned for that this coming Friday. That's going to do it for me, guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, all.